Um, the title of this one, I want to I want to call it um, Hills That Open Eyes. Hills That Open Eyes. And to get into this, I want us to look into Psalm 121. We'll just look at the first couple of verses there. Psalm 121. <clears throat> I think most of us know this scripture, or at least have heard it and have that familiarity. First one says this. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. And verse 2 says, My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So it's talking about eyes, I, uh, that I lift up my eyes unto the hills. And it's talking, it's using the word hills, which is plural. And then he says, From the hills, from which cometh my help. Well, you know, as I was thinking about that, we really don't have a lot of hills here in this part of Texas, although down south we have what's called the hill country, and in south, farther south Texas we have literal mountains. But So I thought, well, I guess I'm not going to get any help because there's no hills for me to lift up my eyes unto. Um, and then I realized that he must be talking about something else. And so as I pondered that, it caused me to begin to get into the scriptures and to see some of the different hills and see what I could learn from, see if I could get some help from those hills. And sure enough, uh, we, we start with um, the Old Testament and Mount Moriah, and it's found in Genesis 22, verse 2 through 13. And most of you know the story, but I'll, I'll take the time to read it. <coughs> This is God speaking, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood of the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire. Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there. And he laid the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham, Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So what we see there is a willingness, a willingness to obey God and to be with God. And, and a lot of times... See, that's just one mountain. He said, lift up your eyes unto the, unto the hills, plural. And so there is that willingness, and there is that willingness to sacrifice. But the question that God always wants us to ask is, where is the lamb? Where is his lamb? Where is the chosen lamb? Where is the one that he has chosen for this task? whether that be on Calvary 2,000 years ago or whether that be within us. Not just our willingness, not just our sacrifice, but 
He wants us to ask, like Isaac did, where is the lamb? And Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. He didn't say God will provide for himself a lamb. God said, I, God, God said, I will provide myself a, as a lamb. So um, <clears throat> that, that heart, that thing of finding that which God wants, that is the true son, the true lamb, in every case. In other words, we're with the Lord. We're, we're blessed. We're, we're willing. We sacrifice. But do we always ask that question? But wait a minute. That's good that I'm doing all this, but where is the lamb? Are we, are we sensitive to the Lord's lamb instead of just doing lamb-like things? And so... And one of the ways that we can sort of, sort of judge that is, uh, this, I've learned these things personally, is that if I do something that is lamb-like, or if I lay down my life for somebody, um, uh, do I feel a, like a, a sense of pride um, for what I did? Well, okay, if I'm feeling pride for what he did, then that's wrong. But if I'm feeling pride for what I did, that's even worse because then it's not the lamb. Because I shouldn't be feeling pride in the sense of I would get pride over Jesus laying down his life through me. Um, one of the other things that the Lord has shown me on this, this level is that um, I'm, I might feel upset or uh, unappreciated when someone, when, when the lamb was manifested through me, didn't acknowledge it or didn't didn't say anything or didn't show any appreciation. Well, if it's him, if it's the lamb himself, I mean, if it's him doing it, we don't get any rewards for that anyway. Remember, before the throne of God, all glory to the lamb, all. Not little, here's a little chunk I'm saving for me um, because <clears throat> um, it's not supposed to be me. Is not supposed to be. That's why God stopped Abraham. One of the reasons. It's not supposed to be your son. It's my son. It's not supposed to be your lamb. It's my lamb. This is, this is the way the Father thinks. This is the way God thinks. This is the way he thinks all the time. This is what's in his heart. This is the lamb that pleases him. This is the, the sacrifice that is acceptable. And the only sacrifice that is acceptable. <laughs> So, and then the, the final thing that I know, and that, I say the final thing, one other thing that I've found that when I lay down my life, but it's not Christ in me, is that um, I kind of feel like somebody ought to pay me back or, or, you know, notice it enough to go, you know, gosh, I really, I really, you know, uh, owe you or something like that, you know, because, um, uh, because of, how I laid down my life. Well, again, if it's my life, you know, I shouldn't be expecting anything. And if, but if it's my life, then it's not the lamb. We didn't ask the question, where is the lamb? I'm here, I'm willing, I'm sacrificing. But at least Isaac said, where is the lamb? See, So, you know, it's, it's just, it's those kind of things, actually, those negative responses that helped me to see at times that I was saying it was Jesus and it wasn't, and I do want it to be Jesus. I want Christ, the Lamb of God, to come out of me. I want Him to be my life, and I want Him to touch lives and things. So the, the Holy Spirit didn't use these things to condemn me. He used these things to point me in the right direction, away from my willingness, my sacrifice, and to find His. <clears throat> and, uh, okay, so that's just one, one of the hills. <laughs> we still got several more to go here. <clears throat> um, uh, Matthew chapter 17, in the first couple of verses, and, and many of you, I'm sure, know that that talks about the transfiguration, and if you didn't, you do know about the story of the transfiguration. And um, so let me read that. Um, this is um, verses 1 through 6. 
And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. Um, one of the things you notice, is, you know, and, and here we see, again, Peter's willingness, and his, it's his willingness to serve Jesus and to serve others, because you've got uh, Moses and Elijah there. So it's willingness to, to serve them. And he says, you know, uh, it is good for us to be here. But he also adds this, if you will, if thou wilt, let us do this. So that's that's good in Christian circles. That would be considered real good because he's he's not just doing it. He's asking permission, and he's asking, "Is this what you want?" Okay. Now that's good, but the real thing was that he didn't recognize that what God was doing, and and he didn't really understand the whole picture here. Um, for example. You know, he's, he's, he's suggesting that he do something for Jesus and for, for Moses and Elijah. Um, and there again, there's that willingness and that willingness to serve. And a lot of people, there are people who would look at um, Jesus first. Jesus first. We're going to put Jesus first, and then we're going to minister to Moses and Elijah. And Jesus first is the definition of memorial ministry. No, it's not. It's not the definition. But I, I could see how someone would say, well, I'm, I'm really putting Jesus first. In this, here's the lesson we begin to learn on this mountain. And I'm not going to elaborate a whole lot on this because some other time I may share with you more on this particular thing. <clears throat> but God, when God, when everybody's talking about Jesus and everybody in the crowd, God overshadows everything but Jesus and says, this is my beloved son. It's not Jesus first. It's Jesus only in memorial ministry. That's, that's the way that works. And, and um, um, for example, the woman, uh, uh, Mary Bethany, when she was ministering to Jesus, she, she was pouring those oils on his body, on his head and his feet, She's pouring those on, but she wasn't thinking about the body. She was thinking about Jesus, and she was, wasn't thinking about the body. She was, in other words, she wasn't just doing ministry to Christians. I serve Jesus first, and I serve Moses and Elijah. She wasn't just doing um, ministry to Christians. She was ministering to Jesus alone in her heart and mind, everything else had been overshadowed. And that's clear from the story if you read it. Memorial ministry is when everything else has been overshadowed. But the body got, a, got benefit from it. Everything, true ministry, true everything that is as pure as that, that uh, oil that she poured upon Jesus, every true ministry will flow from that spirit. Or will just we'll just serve Moses and Elijah separate or we'll just offer up our offerings and our willingness and in place of asking, but where is the lamb? See, there are lessons. I, this is where we're going to get our help from, folks. We're going to lift up our eyes unto the hills. From there comes our help. Okay? And so, <clears throat> um, and let's go ahead and go to the last a uh, hill that we're going to talk about, and I guess couldn't really be right without talking about a hill called Mount Calvary. And there, well, let me just read um, Galatians 2.20 so that we can see not the actual physical hill, uh, not the actual physical crucifixion, but the revealed hill, the revealed crucifixion. And we're going to find that in 
Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, there it is, who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, uh, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That's, the, that's Galatians 2.20 and 2.21. A lot of times we're frustrating the grace of God. The grace of God is... Um, uh, uh, that we see Jesus giving himself and we assume, let's just say it like this, we see Jesus dying, we see Jesus selflessly giving himself on the cross and we go, oh, I want to give him the, I can't remember how it goes, but I want to give him back the, the reward for what he suffered. Um, <clears throat> That's not what Galatians 2.20 is saying. We are, we're seeing the wrong thing on the hill. See, we're looking at the wrong thing. He begins that whole thing of, I am crucified with Christ, not I am going to give back to Christ. By it's, it's that faith of the Son of God and that life of the Son of God within him that will lay down its life. You, again, you always have to ask, where is the lamb? Where is his lamb? Where is the chosen lamb? And that chosen lamb is now in us. I mean, um, when, when you begin to recognize that, the, that hill on a basis other than the historical fact of how Jesus died, help begins to come. Help. And from and, and to be honest with you, I'm sure that we can learn something from every hill and mountain mentioned in the Bible. But when those scriptures said, "I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills," the Spirit of God said, "Let's go. Let's let's go to the hills. Let's start talking. Let's see some things. Let's get some help. <laughs> let's get some real help here. And the help isn't God helping my flesh or helping me. This kind of help is." God given us the greatest kind of help at all, that Christ, the, the Lamb of God and the Son of God, will fulfill everything that the Father desires. It'll all come forth by His life and by that. And so, and I just want to finish off this scripture uh, in the second verse. Uh, I'll read the first and second one. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. Verse 2, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So at first I thought my help came from the hills, but now we're told that our help comes from the Lord, okay? But it was him who, who made those hills, see, and who not just created them, though it says right here, who made heaven and earth. He made the hills, but he came up on those hills and he, he situated himself in those things spiritually and brought forth help that we can see, the things that we've been talking about and the things that I've mentioned. Um, uh, how did I put it? He, he, he made those hills. He instituted those hills before man was even created. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the earth. And he created it before he created man. And he said, on these hills right here that I'm raising up, here's what I'm going to do. He already knew what he was going to do. And, and because it was eternal before man was even created, the truth that those hills are, are teaching us, the hills, we're talking about the hills that open our eyes, the hills that are opening our eyes, they, have, they contain eternal truth in them. And... Then I put, he is what must be comprehended at each hill. Because I lift up my eyes to those hills, but then, and my help comes there, but then the Lord, it says, the Lord, from my help cometh from the Lord, because he's what I behold. He's what I'm getting. He, I, I'm finding God's lamb. I'm finding God's son. I'm finding the him of the situation and not just what the he, what the he can do, if you will. I know that's strange language.
in, in any country. <laughs> so let's thank you for letting me share with you. And let me just pray for us. Pray for us, okay? Father, I just thank you that we can, we can uh, find a scripture that talks about lifting our eyes to the hills because that's where our help comes from and live in a place where there are no hills around us and yet by the Spirit be taken to your hills, to your truth, to your Son, each one of them, blazing the reality of your crucified Son, all three of them. The, the reality of your crucified Son, the one that's going to overshadow everything else and everything will be put to death like on the Mount of Transfiguration. Of that, that reality will be fulfilled at Calvary and then those who rise will rise as one with His body in Him, Him in us, and you will be glorified in your Son and in your chosen Lamb. So, Father, may this not just be a teaching, but may it, uh, may it encourage our hearts. May it encourage us. May we find help, because truly our help came and comes from the Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys.